untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're taking a look at a mono-white aggro deck featuring three copies of Paladin class, the one mana class enchantment from Forgotten Realms on level 1 says spells your opponents cast during your turn, cost one generic mana more to cast so it can punish any instant speed plays from the opponent. For 3 mana we get it to level 2, at which point creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1, and at level 3 for 5 mana, whenever we attack, until end of turn, target attacking creature gets plus 1 plus 1 for each other attacking creature, and gains a double strike, so it can represent a ton of extra damage. And the fact that Paladin class can be cast for just 1 mana is actually an advantage in this deck, even though it's going to cost us 4 mana to get the plus 1 plus 1 to the team, just because our deck cares about casting 2 spells in the same turn, so having a 1 mana spell we can easily cast to double up on spells in the same turn will enable a lot of our various synergies, like the Monk of the Open Hand, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one elf monk, since whenever we cast our second spell each turn, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on Monk of the Open Hand, then we also have a Coach Spell Cleric, a 1-1 one, one from Kaltheim with Vigilance, and when the Cleric enters a battlefield, if it was the second spell we cast this turn, we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. And finally, Clarion Spirit, the 2 mana 2-2, two, two, says whenever we cast our second spell each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying, which will also synergize very nicely with a level 2 from Paladin class, and eventually the level 3 as well. So plenty of double spell synergies, then taking a look at the rest of our deck, at 1 mana we've got some cheap removal with Portable Hole, a 1 mana artifact that when it enters a battlefield, exiles target non-land permanent and opponent controls with mana value 2 or less until Portable Hole leaves the battlefield, so it can even answer opposing class enchantments. And then our final 1 drop is Usher of the Fallen 1 mana 2 1 that can boast for 1 and a white, meaning that we can use the ability when the Usher attacks, and then we get to make a 1 1 white human warrior creature token, so it can also help us with our go white plan with the Paladin class. Then at 2 mana besides Clarion Spirit, we also have Luminarch Aspirant, one of the best 2 drops in recent memory and very powerful in this deck as well, a 1 1 that at the beginning of combat on your turn puts a plus 1 plus 1 counter on target creature you control, and then we're also playing two copies of Professor of Symbology, a 2-1 that when it enters a battlefield lets us learn, so we can grab a lesson out of the sideboard. We have a seven card sideboard in best of one, which includes three copies of Legion Angel to go with the one main deck copy, and then we've got four lessons including Academic Probation, Environmental Sciences to get a land, Reduce to Memory as Removal, and Expanded Anatomy as a Pump Effect. So by getting an extra spell out of the sideboard, it also becomes easier to keep casting two spells in the same turn. And then at 3 mana, we've got some staples in the white decks with Elite Spellbinder, a 3-1 flyer that can take a look at the opponent's hand when it enters a battlefield and exile a non-land card from it, and then the opponent will have to pay two additional mana to cast that card from exile. And then the full playset of Skyclave Apparition, a 2-2 creature that when it enters a battlefield, exiles up to one target non-land, non-token permanent you don't control, with mana value 4 or less. And when the Apparition leaves the battlefield, the opponent will get an Illusion token, with power and toughness equal to the mana value of the exiled card. And then as we mentioned, one Legion Angel to top off our curve, 4-3 Flyer that when it enters the battlefield, lets us reveal a card we own named Legion Angel from outside the game and put it into our hand, so we can chain together a whole bunch of Legion Angels out of the sideboard. And then a mana base consists of 20 snow-covered planes and 3 copies of Faceless Haven which can benefit from those snow lands, can turn into a 4-3 creature which can also help us close out the game. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Turn one, Monk. Turn two, probably Aspirant. And then turn three, we'll be able to double spell for the Monk. Up against a red-green deck, turn two, Innkeeper. Mammoth. Okay. So 
So Aspirin plus Paladin class looks good. And then... Could grow the Aspirin twice to trade for Mammoth. Which is reasonable, although next turn we can level a Paladin class to just attack past it. And I think we can win the race. There's no Ember Cleave to worry about anymore. So in that case, maybe just grow the Monk twice. And a 5-5 five is going to be tricky for Red Green to deal with. Although I guess Blizzard Brawl could still get the job done. It's going to be a Ranger class making a wolf. And a level up for plus one counters. So we're taking six. Clarion Spirit also a decent draw, but a level up is tempting. Because then I can attack with both my Aspirants past the Wolf token. Although if I double spell, I grow the Monk and make a Spirit token. Yeah, double spelling's still probably better here. And we'll learn for... So I can level up and cast a 2-drop, probably Probation, to remove a blocker. And then now I don't mind trading my Aspirants for the Wolf. Opponent's at 7. Even if Goldspan Dragon shows up, we should be okay. Frostbite takes care of the second Aspirants. Magda into another Ranger class. Mammoth still attacking. So let's say we take 7. Next turn I can level up plus probation. Let's say remove the uh, wolf token from blocking. Opponents at 9, so they're gonna go chump. And then 6, 7, 8. They're not quite dead, but it's close. Either way, probably take damage from Mammoth. Usher the draw, so now we can trigger Clarion Spirits if we cast Probation. Probation could prevent Mammoth from attacking next turn. Which is worth pointing out as well. Or we can level a Paladin class, do something else, and then next turn get a level 3 Paladin class to cross the finish line. So I guess I don't mind the level up plus Academic Probation on Mammoth. Because again, if we Probation a blocker here, they chump, and then they can trade and still live. So... Could also keep the Monk on defense if we wanted to. And then just send the Flyer, put him to 7, and then next turn the Flyer's lethal. It's probably the safest play overall. I guess we're still dead to Goldspan of the top, which was a reason to keep the Spirit token back. But it's probably a risk I'm willing to take. Opponent levels up a Ranger class. Thanks with Magda. Nope. The Wolf. I mean, they could have a Frostbite to finish off Monk, but that still leaves them dead to a level 3 Paladin class. Because the token would get plus 2, plus 2, and double strike. So if that's their turn, I'm pretty happy. Yep. That's 8 damage in the air. Alright, sweet. 
I wonder if there was a better line that lets us beat a top deck Goldspan Dragon while presenting lethal on the following turn and not losing to removal, but uh, yeah, I guess it worked out in the end. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand. So if we go turn one Monk, turn two we can go Monk plus another one drop and trigger both. That seems good. So Usher it is. Don't have our third land yet. But we can always decide to boast if we don't have anything else going on. Looks like another... nope. Maybe not a mirror match as our opponent foretells. So that could be a sweeper incoming. Which is going to be painful but I think we just boast as opposed to playing Clarion Spirit then. Could also double spell if we just want to play the portable hole to trigger Monk. Doesn't seem worth it. Doomscar is going to be painful. Well, we can rebuild at least. Spellbinder, Exile's Apparition. Probably not going to be a great matchup for a portable hole. So, what am I doing here? Level up Paladin class, or I can double spell just to make a spirit token. Opponent most likely trades for Clarion Spirit. I think we just uh, level up and hit for two. And then an extra Paladin class could make a 4-4 Spirit, which can attack past Spellbinder. Alright, never mind. Put on somewhat likely to trade for the token now, I would say. Getting on the board again with Usher is nice, although Paladin class is more mana efficient. And the next run with the land we can usher plus level up again. Alright, that's great. And land 5 means apparition can exile the elixir or the spellbinder. Or we can get to a level 3 Paladin class. Opponent does nothing at all. Opponent's plan might be to animate Faceless Haven. So we might want to play Portable Hole just to trigger Monk and Clarion Spirit first. And then I can still boast. And attack. Alright. Hopefully no more Doom Scars. Opponent finds their green mana for Innkeeper. So land away from a level 3 Paladin class, which will close out a game for us. Another Innkeeper. Right, spellbinder to play. So we can smash. Might as well Spellbinder first on off chance that they could cast an instance for 3 mana. Double Vorinclex, I see. Well, given that they have two, there's probably no point in taking a Vorinclex. So, 
so they seem pretty dead to our flyers. They'll gain a bit of life here with Elixir and Innkeeper. But a lance means they're dead. Sixteen damage from just a spellbinder. Alright. Managed to survive turn three Doomscar. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a decent hand. The Faceless Haven might be a bit of a liability if we don't draw a second plane soon, but uh, can always play a two drop on turn two instead of double spelling. All right, we did draw the planes. I'm still likely to want to play Clarion Spirit, although I guess we could save it until turn three and then turn one. Don't think I want a portable hole, the Usher. So I probably just play my own. That way if the opponent has their own Aspirant, we can still trade. Ah, they've got a Clarion Spirits. So... Yeah, if the plan is to play our own Clarion Spirit next turn, the opponent gets to go off with theirs. If I portable hold their Spirits, then we can double it with Monk. But then I might not have ways to double spell easily with my own Clarion Spirit later. So it's much more efficient to play our own 2-drop next turn. And at that point, I maybe play Aspirants instead of Clarion Spirits, and then I want to be able to hit for 3 on the way back. Legion Angels, excellent. Yeah, I'm most likely just going to go Clarion Spirit Portable Hole next turn. Ah, put on traits. That's fine. Now we can save the hole for another relevant creature. Take two. And our opponent's stuck on two lands. Alrighty, so... Now I can go Monk plus Professor instead. And save the Clarion Spirit portable hole for later, since there's nothing I really need to exile right now. And then I don't mind getting Sciences, since we could use an extra land. Pump Aspirant hit for two. So we're missing out on maybe a Spirit Token or two, but saving the portable hole for maybe another Clarion Spirit or Luminarch Aspirant could be key. Alright, so now probably go for Spellbinder. Could also go Sciences into Clarion Spirit, which feels a bit inefficient. But it would grow our Monk. Which would then have a good attack. Let's just have a look. Alright, opponent's got the Grandmaster. Legion Angel is probably what we want to make more expensive here. And pass it back. So they're probably going to Apparition a Spellbinder. Code Spell Cleric was a good draw. So now Clarion into Code Spell. Make a 4 4 monk and attack with it. And another monk into portable hole. Exiles are 4 4. Could get it back by exiling their portable hole with my own, but then it's going to be back to a 1 1. So instead, will Sciences get a land play Aspirant? Looks good. Start growing the Flyer. And next turn, deploy Legion Angel. Still have our own portable hole for an opposing Aspirant or Clarion Spirits. 
And we should be able to go wide enough to attack down this planeswalker. Paladin class also great. Although I think I prefer the Legion Angel for now. Could also consider sending like a Professor of Symbology, but it's probably just trading for an Usher. Opponent's gonna get another Monk. But it's probably gonna be their last one. Come be a hero. Right, they have another castable spell, so triple monk will pick up a counter. So yeah, our opponent's still in the game with that professor triggering all the monks. Can set up some decent attacks. So I can probably afford to trade Professor Code Spell Cleric here and then take three. Okay, now we get to double spell again. Probably Paladin class over Portable Hole still. And yeah, the Legion Angel is going to be hard to beat. So our opponent's at 12. So we don't quite have lethal this turn, but we can make it a two-turn clock. I guess had we gone for Paladin class level up, our opponent would have been dead here. So that's my bad. Uh, yeah, we'll take out the Planeswalker. And then... Just gotta watch out for an opposing top-decked Paladin class, I suppose. But I think we've got enough blockers back. Yeah, Paladin class level up would have been Exaxes had we gone face. Alright, so... Next turn, Portable Hole, Exile the Flyer. Should be game. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine hand. Turn one. Think we go with Monk. To maximize our double spell synergies, because playing Monk and Clara Spirit in the same turn means we're missing out on at least one of the triggers. So next turn we can Spirit into Usher. Make two spirit tokens, grow the monk. Up against mono green. Aspirin's tempting too, but I think we want to be double spelling. And then now I'll trade my clarion spirit. It's going to be tough for them to catch back up, but let's see what they can pull off here. So we can double spell again with Aspirant and Usher now. Which does seem worth it. And then I can grow the Monk if I want to attack past the Troll. Which they will probably trade. But our opponent packs it in. Yeah. These uh, mono green matchups, of course, being on the play is a big advantage, and then it's all about having a nice smooth curve starting out. Cards like Portable Hole are great to have, and on the green side of things, Blizzard Brawl can be a great way to kind of break serve and catch back up. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Double Monk of the Open Hand gonna put in some work. No shortage of cheap spells to play to in the same turn. Yeah, we'll start out with a monk. 
And then turn two, we've got a couple options. Could go Monk into Usher. And then save Clarion Spirit for turn three, assuming we draw land. Now we picked up a Code Spell Cleric as well. Playing against maybe a mono black deck with turn on Skyclave Shade. So they could easily have some removal here, so might want to save Spirit until we get immediate value. And then I prefer double one drop. So let's go Monk into... Yeah, sure, Code Spell Cleric. And then what three drop can they present? I'm not sure. But we'll just sit for three. If it's like a Nighthawk Scavenger, we want to have some three powered creatures. So two two code spells not going to do me any favors. And we could trade here. Slow down the opponent's aggression. Since we don't have any Paladin classes to really make our code spell more impressive, if their plan is just to replay Skyclave Shade, I'm pretty happy. So land of the top would be great. Alright, if they do have the Blood Chief's Thirst. Alright, so we do get to double spell again. Yep, there's a Nighthawk Scavenger. Take it. And then I can put a counter on Usher to attack with it. And then I can either boast or play another Usher. If I play Usher, I grow the Monk as well. And I trigger Clarion Spirit, which is probably worth it. Opponent trades. So a great board for a Paladin class now. Take three. And if we don't draw anything, we can still double boost the ushers and our opponent packs it in. Yeah, they needed a sweeper like Crippling Fear. Didn't have it and they're just too far behind. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a solid hand. Could use a few extra lands, but the professor can find environmental sciences to help us with that as well. Alright, turn two we'll go with maybe just Professor to secure that environmental sciences, even though it means giving up on turn two aspirant. Best case scenario we can just draw the land, so next turn we can still double spell without needing sciences. Opponent foretells a card, so it could be a more controlling deck with Doomscar. In which case I'm pretty happy that uh, we don't have our more valuable creatures in play. So yeah, we can boast with Usher. And then Paladin class might be the play. Although if I Sciences, I do kind of guarantee a fourth land for next turn. So maybe that's still better. Question is whether the opponent's gonna feel forced to Doomscar next turn. If I don't boast here. And then I think I'm okay playing the Paladin class. Legion Angel also a decent play in the face of a potential sweeper since we just get more copies. Uh, Spellbinder probably gonna make our Legion Angel more expensive. So now the question remains, are we afraid of a sweeper or not? 
Don't really want a Skyclave in the face of Doomscar. Definitely don't want a double spell. So I guess we just level up Paladin class and attack. And most likely see a trade. And then next turn I can just animate Faceless Haven. Another Spellbinder is going to go for Apparition. But now Haven will have 4 Toughness so it can attack past Spellbinder. They might go for one of the two drops to make my double spell turn more awkward. Yeah, it goes for Clarion Spirit. So, yeah, so far the only cards it feels they can have is Doomscar. Opponent trades. Opponent chumps. Opponent trades. Takes five. Yeah, we're gonna make that Doomscar as ineffective as possible. And that's where the creature lands definitely shine. And now a Monk of the Open Hand into a Loyal Warhound. Alright. So, not entirely sure what to make of this. But now the Haven doesn't have a good attack anymore. So I guess we play Clarion Spirit and then... Maybe start making some Spirit Tokens. Monk and Warhound could still go in a more controlling build, given that you can play Monk alongside the Planeswalker. So it might just be like a 2 or 3 off. Apparition... Goes for Paladin class. And our opponent attacks. Can take five. Professor is a nice one. Second so aspirin plus professor. That way we still hold something back, make a spirit token, and maybe even put the counter on the spirit token itself. And what do we want to learn? Anatomy could potentially present a lethal spirits. If we draw land next turn. As we'll be able to play Aspirant and Anatomy and make it a six powered flyer. Opponent foretells another card. Could also be a Chaos Onslaught in white, I suppose. Although they had the opportunity to cast a Chaos Onslaught earlier with a Spellbinder and didn't. So yeah, I'm still not entirely sure. Did not draw the land, so we're not quite going to have lethal here. So at that point I don't feel like playing more stuff out. And uh, let's see, do we have lethal if we go for Skyclave? Let's say Exile the Monk. Aspirin put counter on itself. And then the opponent can still survive, but they would be at two. Thing is, they would probably be happy to trade the Apparition so we don't get the 1-1 one, one post sweeper. So, yeah, I think we just uh, hit for three and see if they have a response. And then we can still readjust our game plan second main phase if they have spot removal instead. Otherwise the spirit can easily cross the finish line by itself. Uh -huh, glorious Protector. Okay, not the card I was expecting. So they might still have a Doomscar as well here. That dies. So how is this worded again? Yeah, if I Skyclave the Protector, they get their creatures back and then Doomscar doesn't look as impressive anymore. Hmm. 
We'll see. A bit of a strange game here. Could of course be another Glorious Protector, but that's not what it feels like. So I'm gonna block as if they're gonna wipe the board. And that means not killing the Skyclave, but I would be happy to trade my Skyclave. So something like this makes sense. Maybe Trump Apparition, is that too much? Yeah, I guess that's probably too much. So these would trade, they get their 4-4. This dies. And yep, there's the Doomscar. At least I'm not going insane. Yeah, the attack was maybe not the best since we got the opportunity to give them the 4-4 before the sweeper. So now that they're at 6, we could animate Faceless Haven, which would force a uh, jump from the Clarion Spirit, or at least a trade. Or we could go Skyclave plus Aspirants, which is also decent. And Spellbinder. So they have three blockers. They can still survive the Faceless Haven attack. I guess they can jump to stay alive. But that's fine by me. And our opponent concedes. So yeah, this was a bit of a strange game with that early Fortella leading us to think they were a much more controlling deck than they ended up being. But uh, yeah, opponent with an interesting Glorious Protector Doomscar package. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. A layer of the Hydra pointing towards maybe the mono green deck. Portable hole pretty good in that matchup. So, good portable hole, good aspirants, or we could professor. Don't actually hit professor since I don't want my aspirants killed by blizzard brawl. Although I guess their opponent doesn't have any snow lands yet. They could of course level up, attack, and then fight. Which is a reason to portable hole, but that's more efficient next turn. I'll play the Aspirant instead. Opponent attacks, we'll take it. They didn't level up Ranger class, so maybe gonna be an old growth troll here. Yep, which is a good target for Skyclave Apparition. Alright, now that they leveled up the Ranger class, it's a more appealing target for Portable Hole. So, looks like a Blizzard Brawl, but it's gonna trade for the Wolf, so not too bad. Alrighty, so we can Triple Spell, Professor, Portable Hole, Cleric.
And then Professor could get a reduced to memory. Could get anatomy. Don't hate anatomy. Could have also waited on the portable hole since our opponent's unlikely to be able to level up to level 3 and get value from class immediately. And we can still easily play portable hole next to Legion Angel on turn 5. Opponent does have the chariot. That was kind of the reason I was somewhat uh, considering reduced to memory, but now I think the plan is to fly over with Legion Angel and let that carry us to victory. Otherwise, Anatomy on Apparition also would have been a reasonable play. Another troll. Can crew the chariots. Sends in the team. Yeah, so we've got some options, but I think this trade is fine for now. And then Professor can trade as well. Got more Legion Angels to play. And then... Skyclave could trade for Shambler and the Cat token. Give them a 3-3 token. It's probably acceptable. So let's see our points at 11. I think I want to deploy second angel before anatomy still. And we'll take four from the troll. Alright, we've got another one. And a faceless haven, which they cannot quite activate, but Lair of the Hydra can get in there. So Angel, Paladin class, hit for four, and then next turn we should be able to take over with our flyers. Unless the opponent draws a removal spell. Then, even in the event of another fight spell, we could draw lands to go anatomy plus level a paladin class to it for seven with a single angel. Yeah, this game might have looked a little bit different if they had uh, three snow lands at the start of the game. But as good as Lair of the Hydra is, it does have a drawback in the deck as well. So, 4 4 Hydra attacks, opponent sends a team. And chump, take eight. And that should do it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Facing the mirror match. Alright, so next turn we can grow the monk of the open hand. Could also bowstrow an usher if that gets to attack. Do I want to trade as a question? Given that I have paladin class, I don't really want to trade my creatures. So I think playing our own usher makes the most sense at that point. Most likely to have a good attack next turn, and maybe the option of boasting is the best one. Alright, opponent's got the portable hole. So. We're a bit behind here. 
Hopefully the Legion Angel can catch us back up. I think I gotta take it, and then next turn, leveling a Paladin class will give us a 3-3 on defense. Opponent is stuck on two lanes, now we can also play a Spellbinder if we want. Although leveling up class could still be better. It's bad if our opponent has more removal for our only blocker. Which we could potentially make more expensive with the Spellbinder, but that also means we're taking damage from all the two-part creatures again. So I'm gonna level up and hope there's no land into Skyclave or another portable hole. Uh, Illuminarch Aspirants we can live with. Take three. And then now I want to double spell And I think the opposing Spellbinder is probably more annoying if we have to cast Legion Angel for 6 mana. And then, can I afford to attack? I don't think so. Could also level up our Paladin class to level 3 now. Could trade here. I think still getting the board presence from Legion Angel is going to be better for us. And then... Probably don't want to trade Spellbinder for Raptor and 1-1. Uh, one, one. And there's Raidan, so our Snow Lions will come into play tapped now. Portable Holes, excellent. So that probably gets rid of Aspirants as our opponent explodes. Yeah, Legion Angel is such a mirror breaker that it's pretty hard to beat if one player draws it and the other doesn't. And then we were eventually probably going to take over in the skies with maybe a level 3 Paladin class to speed up our clock significantly. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. Kick things off with probably a monk now. And then next one we can go Usher plus Cleric. And then where to put the counter? Maybe the Cleric itself. Because if I put counter on Monk it still dies to a Frostbite with a third Snowland. And we are on the Paladin class plan, so we want all our creatures to be able to have good attacks. So I don't necessarily need to counter on Usher to attack past the Innkeeper once we give it plus one plus one. Plus we might exile the Innkeeper with Apparition if they don't present the better targets. Now that they didn't play the third Snowland, I might regret the decision not to make a 3-3 monk in case of frostbite. Second innkeeper. Right, Aspirant, we can double spell with Paladin class. So Paladin class first, so they can't kill our Aspirant easily because of the level 1 tax. So it doesn't seem like they have it. And then, yeah, if they want to trade both their innkeepers for Usher, that's fine by me. Opponent takes it. Is this the Goldspan Dragon turn? Something like a Seacast Chariot could also be very effective. Yep, and there's a Goldspan. So they'll have four mana left over once they attack.
and a chariot. Alright, well, one of those would have been effective, but they had both instead. So now what? I can Apparition, Exile the Chariot itself, play Code Spell Cleric, and still try to line up some favorable attacks. And then... Kind of like encounter on Usher. And then counter on Code Spell. Poem goes for the double block. Okay. Alright, and then hopefully Paladin class can carry us to victory. We expended a lot of resources dealing with that uh, chariot. Magda. At least they've depleted most of their treasure. One card left in hand, opponent passes. So we can level a paladin class and boast with Usher. Can put counter on Aspirant itself, perhaps. And attack with a team. All right, well, let's see what happens next. We're at 12. Still a faceless haven to worry about, but her opponent packs it in. Sweet, so yeah, despite a pretty decent curve out with Chariot and Goldspan, we were able to go wide enough to take over. All right, so we get to see our mono white deck in action, and it definitely performed quite well for us today. So if you're looking for a powerful deck to grind the ladder, mono white is a decent choice. Now, the one downside of playing this deck is you're not going to get a lot of variety in your matchups with the way the matchmaking works on Arena. So if you like a lot of different matchups, then this might not be the deck for you, since it feels like about half the time you're going to be playing against another mono white deck or the mono green snow deck. So that's the one disadvantage of playing these popular decks. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.